Hi, I'm Jeff, and I'm going to be showing you a demonstration of AGI software for cislunar applications. Uh, lunar mission design in general has been a hot topic lately in the, in the news and in the industry, and more recently, the focus on cislunar space, which is that region between geosynchronous orbit and lunar orbit. So there was a recent uh, article posted about the Pentagon wanting to solve a deep space problem with three vehicles. This is all related to the SDA and a looking at an architecture that focuses on a series of deterrence la layers, and one of them is specifically focused on cislunar space. So in this example, we're going to show a uh, scenario that we've built that has a geosynchronous satellite uh, that is tracking a couple different vehicles, other satellites that are over in cislunar space. So let me quickly orient you to the workspace here. You have the geo satellite here orbiting the Earth, this red zone is the shadow of the Earth, the eclipse area. And then you also see the, the moon's orbit here. So in this case, we've built a couple different additional satellites called L1 and L2. And these are satellites that are going to the uh, vibration point around uh, Earth, moon, L1 and L2 point. And we built these using SDK's astrogator module. And we designed the mission to get out from uh, geo uh, from Earth's orbit out to the moon. You can see the sequences used to define this. It goes out to the moon for a while, it, it orbits for a while, and then this L1 satellite, after getting to that point, will actually return. So let's go ahead and play this and see how this works. So you can see the L1 and L2 satellites on their way to their uh, libration point. We have our geosynchronous satellite that is uh, orbiting the Earth here in geo. And I'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit. Um, we see our, we have got our timeline view on the bottom that shows the different segments of the orbits. And so here we can see our, our L1 satellite is now getting into uh, its orbit around the moon. It has some minimal delta Vs it needs to apply here in this point for the station keeping uh, at this L1 point. I'll go ahead and speed things up here significantly. And we'll see it does just a few different orbits here uh, at L1 and then it'll eventually uh, come back uh, to Earth's orbit. And so the, the highlight here is you can quickly build up a wide variety of scenarios and trajectories and simulations and then start performing detailed analysis on it, whether it's you know, basic geometry or line of sight or communications analysis, all the way to EOIR and sensor performance and how well can you actually track targets in this region. I did a previous uh, product demonstration that showed how to use SDK to build lunar missions in just five minutes. Um, so it's very quick and easy to build these, uh, these trajectories. And so here we see the L1 satellite now returning back to, um, back to the Earth. And so what we wanted to show is how would you be able to detect a satellite that's potentially doing this? These are very far distances. And if we had a sensor that was able to, to track that, how well would, be, would we be able to actually see that target? So on our geo satellite, uh, we've modeled a sensor. And if we turn that on, we can see the, the field of view here in the uh, 3D graphics window. And if we open the properties, we can see how we've defined this sensor. So here you can see we've used the sensor type of EOIR, and this allows us to model the radiometric performance of the, of the sensor. And you see we've got a given a field of view, we've given it a, a specific wavelength, and then we've set the, uh, the different sensor performance characteristics uh, with these other tabs here. And so what we can do ultimately is we can calculate how well we are able to track this target. So the, what we've done here is uh, created a graph that plots this over time. And if I show where we currently are at this particular moment, um, I can see where that is, and I can jump to different moments uh, within this, this time period. So for example, let's go ahead and jump to uh, this little uh, spike here that shows uh, as the satellite gets closer, you can see the, uh, the target. So here we've got our geo satellite and the L1 satellite now close to it. Um, so you can see the values and how low the signal to noise ratio is further away. And uh, right here at this point, we're able to get a certain SNR value. So what you can do from here is you can actually generate a synthetic scene. So if I was to actually look 
out the bore side of the sensor, what would that sensor be picking up? And here we can see what that, what that is. So you can see there's a, a bunch of noise in the background. There's a, a white dot there in the middle. And if we look at the details of this image, we can interrogate each individual pixel of our sensor, and it'll give you the different values. So if you actually click on the, uh, the white dot in the center of the image where our sensor is looking, you see the geo satellite looking at the L1 satellite, and that is the target that we're seeing, that little that pixel, that white dot in the center of our screen. Um, and then you can get other values out of that, the, the spectral radiance and band irradiance. Um, and there's other data you can pull out of STK. But the nice thing is viewing that picture to see how well can you actually detect and track these targets um, that are out here in space. And again, if you look at the, the plot here, based on the target signature characteristics and the sensor performance characteristics, these are the values you'd get. So if I jump a little bit earlier in the time, and let's see when maybe somewhere closer to here, I can see here we've got the GEO satellite. Uh, this is when the L1 is starting to make its approach into GEO. Um, and if you make a, a synthetic view here, uh, you can see what the results look like. In this case, it looks like we're still able to detect the target a little bit. Uh, but it's much fainter, the noise in the background is getting higher, and you can keep doing that. So if we go even a little bit further back, so now we're further into cislunar space here. If we were to generate a new synthetic scene, uh, you'll be able to see what that looks like. And at this point, the noise, because we're so far away, um, you actually can't resolve the, the target um, very well. So if you uh, click closer on the image here, and you click towards the middle, you might be able to see it. Um, but it's very small and very faint and very hard to see at this, uh, at this region. And, and of course, what you can do is you can start varying different parameters. You could go into the target satellite properties, uh, and you could start changing the EOIR shape. You could, in this case, we've modeled it as a simple sphere at a given temperature. So you could change what those values might be for different targets. Um, you can change the sensor performance characteristics. So maybe you can give yourself a uh, better sensitivity or uh, increase the effective focal length or F number. And you can start doing trade studies to see what type of system do you need in order to track these targets. And then you could run a variety of trades on different trajectory types um, and, and look at this, this larger problem. In this case, we've got just one geo tracking the L1 satellite, but maybe we have a second satellite uh, maybe that's operating goes back and forth between L1 and Earth and a variety of different options you can look at. So that's just a quick summary of some of the ways that you can use STK to look at some of these cislunar scenarios and how we'd be able to have that deterrence layer out in cislunar space that is tracking vehicles going in between the Earth and the Moon. And uh, if you have any questions at all about this scenario, uh, please feel free to explore our website that has more information on Astrogator and EOIR, or feel free to contact our support team, uh, support at AGI.com. Thanks.